So the day was split up. I would probably say like 60, 40, 60 being how much time you spent in your cell, 40 being how much time you spend out of your cell. The sessions were always quite short, whether it was work or whether it was education. Even though they called it work, it was weird because you were paid, <laughs> if minimum wage is bad, you're paid lower than minimum wage. I think it worked out like one pound 40 per session. That's how much you were paid. Um, and obviously, it accumulates because in prison you don't pay taxes. Um, so when you buy things, you don't pay tax, so it's cheaper. But at the same time, you're getting paid like one pound something per session. You're not exactly uh, cashing it in at the end of the week or the month. The money situation in prison, we had something called a canteen sheet. Basically, there was like a provider who provided, you know, food, drink, uh, things like deodorant, um, nicotine, and so on. Um, so we had a sheet that we could tick off what we wanted in quantities and at the top it will have how much money we had. Now you can have people send you money through postal order to put on your account, but depending on the level of prisoner you are, depends on how much money you can spend. So you've got basic prisoner and then you've got an enhanced prisoner. As an enhanced prisoner, I think you had a spending cap of like 50 pounds, but basic was like 25 pounds. But on this sheet you could buy you know, your snacks, biscuits, crisps, noodles, just extra things that you can have. It was, as I say, a lot different from being outside where you could go to your local corner shop or your local Sainsbury's or Tesco's. You know, you had to depend on someone who had money when you didn't have money and how money works in there. As I say, you get paid pound seventy per session for cutting people's hair for two hours or, you know, doing bricklaying. When we look at like day-to-day -day normal things, things like brushing your teeth, you had a little sink in your cell and showers, just a big communal shower, but there was just nothing, it was just open. I think they let eight people in the shower at one time and there was uh, mainly women governors in prison. Things like laundry, in prison they give you like tracksuits and the only thing that you have that is your own is your trainers, everything else is from the prison. For somebody who likes things how I like them and you don't get to smell your fabric conditioner that you like and the toilet that you use is in your, so it's just there. It's not in a room, it's not in a locked door, it's just, there's a curtain, literally, to separate you from your cellmate. It's a bit difficult to go for a number two when you, you've got a cellmate in the room with you who can hear and smell everything that's going on. It's just, it was weird, very weird inside. You don't have no technology around you. There's no laptops, there's no phones, there's no internet, there's no Xboxes, you, you know. Um, the guy who I was banged up with first, he was on his way out, he was leaving, and he left me his stereo and he left me Retro 2's retrospective album. Um, and that album took me through prison. If I ever one day get to meet the guy, I'll tell him. <laughs> Having something like that is what people would kind of turn their nose up to. I was like, yeah, I've got a CD player. <laughs> you know, so I could listen to my albums and blare them out as loud as I wanted to on the wing, um, which was, it was good. It helped. It helped to calm me down. It helped to relax me. Um, and it helped me to sort of put things into perspective, you know. Even though life was bad, it's not as bad as it could have been.